if you think about a funnel, right? A funnel is wide at the top, collects a lot of options, opportunities, and it actually gets narrow at the bottom so that it creates a steady stream. So from randomized droplets at the top of the funnel to a steady stream at the bottom, how can we use this in our social life to start to build a social circle? Well, we have to commit to going out and meeting new people, right? We're not going to build a social circle by sitting on our couch, by watching Netflix, by binging the Art of Charm podcast. As much as I wish that would be effective for you, we know it's not. So we have to commit to going out and socializing. But we want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success. And as Michael said, just going out and meeting a random selection of people each and every night, facing that rejection from strangers, you're not highly likely to find a lot of people that are a great connection for you, that have similarities and interests and are actually going about life on their own mission that you could be a part of. So as Johnny said, we have to identify what our core values are. What's really meaningful to us? What's guiding us? Is it physical health? Then maybe it's fitness. Is it entrepreneurship? Then maybe it's a networking event. Can you find a hobby or a passion or pursuit that has a social activity tied to it? Maybe it's golf for me or hiking or joining a run club as we talked about. These opportunities to meet new like-minded people who share a common interest is the top of the funnel step. I like the two to one rule where we commit to one social activity a week for every two dates that we go on. So as you're getting your dating life back in order, you can't tip the balance only to romance. You have to commit to at least going out and socializing once a week. That could be after work, that could be on the weekend, but in that top of the funnel activity, we're meeting and connecting with new people. Now here's where we start to qualify and we narrow our focus with that funnel. We start to filter in the right high value people for us. We commit to hosting once a month an activity that we can invite people to. And this activity can be a hike together, it could be a run, it could be a mountain bike excursion, it could be a dinner party, it could be a poker night, but you are the host. You are the connector. You are inviting people into an activity that you enjoy. And what that does is it creates a filtering step. So you're not spinning your wheels, spending a lot of time chasing after social options and social connections with people who aren't like-minded, who don't enjoy the same things, who you're probably not going to share a great connection with. So if I invite 10 people to poker night and six of them pass on that poker night, I have four people who enjoy poker who I got together. I have an opportunity now with a limited amount of time, that one poker night, to start to spark real connections with people that I met at a run club, that I met on the golf course, that I met at the meetup event. And in that opportunity of inviting people in, I've provided an opportunity for them to get a better sense who I am, but not doing it one-on-one, -on -one, not spinning my wheels, chasing people for a beer or for a dinner or for a coffee in a one-on-one -on -one setting, which is not a very efficient use of my time, so that hosting is the second step of the funnel. We're, we're committing to one social activity to find like-minded people. We're inviting them to one group activity a month in your life where you're hosting. And what comes out of that event, the bottom of the funnel, is an opportunity for the right people to be filtered into your life, to go to dinner with, to invite on that trip, to actually spend more quality time alone with. So we're meeting tons of people, creating options in our life at the top of the funnel. We're hosting events to start to filter in the right people for ourselves. And then at the bottom of the funnel, the people who had a great time at the event, the people who we felt a natural inclination and connection for, we then commit to inviting to dinner, hanging out with on our boat, taking out in a one-on-one -on -one fashion. That's how you start to foster and build a real social circle in a new area, coming out of a breakup, not knowing very many people. So you're basically making rejection work for you because if you invite 10 people to poker night that you brought in through the first stage in the funnel and six of them don't reply or they don't show up or they, they flake out or whatever, rejection works for you because you don't want to invest more time into those that you know didn't reply, didn't invite you back to another event or whatever. You're, make, you're bringing in a lot of people and then you bring in rejection. And you let, you let retraction sort out those that 
should not go on a one-on-one -on -one event occasion doing something together whatever it may be you don't you don't want them there because you only have a limited amount of time and why not spend that limited amount of time with high value people that like you for being you and that like to help you out and that like to spend time with you and that won't work with every single person you bring into that funnel because there's so many of them You need rejection. Rejection is like a high five. Okay, great. I know I can probably like take those names off of my list. That's a great thing. In that rejection, there's a really incredible moment that happens. It's called the power of the invite. When you get comfortable inviting people into your life, you unlock reciprocity. And what happens is even if of the six people who said no to the poker night, they didn't they rejected you in that moment. They didn't come to your event. You're now top of mind for them to invite you to something going on in their life. The baseball game, the mountain bike trip, the new restaurant opening down the street. So even in that rejection, you've planted the seed of, I want to connect with you. I want to foster a relationship with you that bumps you up the top of their list to invite in the future. And I found this reciprocity to be so powerful. Even in the face of rejection, those people now see me as someone who's trying to connect, who wants a relationship, who's looking to grow my social circle, and they're going to think of me when they have an opportunity to invite someone somewhere. So three points um, before we go into the summary of, of everything that we went through today that, that this takes care of. Number one, it creates a space for you to get well, to get physically fit, and to heal yourself from the, the trauma of getting out of one relationship. This allows you to get active, be social again, put your, put your uh, get back out there and be meeting people. And then lastly, creating options in your life so that you have the power in the dating market. Mm -hmm.